Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie Mulligan and I am the author of How to Catch a Keeper. This book is all about lobstering, lobster fishing. I worked on a lobster boat for eight years in Portland, Maine. Have you ever been to Maine? I think you'd really love it. I hope that everyone is staying safe right now. But I am very hopeful that someday, if you wish to come to Maine, that you'll be able to come and do some lobstering. And I'd love to teach you all about it. What prompted me to do this video is because Mrs. Lynn Mayer reached out to me. She is a librarian in Old Town, Maine, and she told me there are some very special fourth graders that are learning about the Gulf of Maine. So I was very excited to share this time with you. You might notice in the back, I have some props. This is a lobster trap. It's a mini trap. Usually the traps we use are much larger. And this is wearable seaweed. This, you'll find there's ribbon kelp in my book and you'll learn about that. And some of the tools that you'll notice in the book are the measuring gauge. This is how we know if a lobster is big enough to keep. And if it is, it's called a keeper. And this is the banding tool. So we'll put the rubber bands on here and then the rubber bands go on the lobster's claws. You'll learn about that too. And don't forget the smelly bait. And here's a bait bag. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here and I'm really excited to read my book to you. Luke and Layla's summer has finally begun and a trip to the Maine coast is sounding really fun. Out the door they go into the early dawn, their dad points to the map and begins to ramble on. Summer by the coast is always full of fun. Let's get moving right away and go enjoy the sun. I love the summertime in Maine. I love all four seasons. Summertime is really special though. And here's Fort Gorgeous. This is an old Civil War fort. That's in Casco Bay in Portland, Maine. There are many ways to play in Maine you're sure to really like. I know of fun spots to explore and islands we can bike. There are cruises and museums and lighthouses galore, but I think my favorite is the Lucky Catch Tour. That's the boat I worked on for eight years with Captain Tom, and you can learn about him in the back of the book. There's Portland Headlight. This is the most photographed and painted lighthouse in the world. It was commissioned to be built by George Washington, our first president. What's so great about this tour? Luke and Layla say, Dad says, we'll get to ride a lobster boat on this very day. There's so much to learn about lobstering deers. When Captain Tom speaks, please perk up your ears. This is a hands-on tour, Tom tells everyone. Rain or shine, we'll always have fun. Captain Tom's been fishing since he was 14 years old. You'll need aprons and gloves to protect you from mud. The traps sometimes splash when they land with a thud. On the big red mat, Captain Tom stands where the winch pulls up traps and could injure your hands. There's his sweet dog, Sammy, with black and white hair. She listens so well that she's allowed to stand there. It's easy to see that she loves Casco Bay. How excited she gets spotting buoys all day. The buoys with red tops and green stripes around, these all mark the spots where Tom's traps are found. Tom says to the crowd, step up if you're daring, it's time to fill the bait bags with salty smelly herring. So herring is the type of bait we use a lot on the tours. Lobstermen also use hoagies and that is the preferred bait to use on the tour. It's a little less stinky. And having your own color scheme of buoy 
is very important. You never want to mistaken your buoy for someone else's. You could get fined, you could get in big trouble. So that's why we talk about the colors on the buoy. Layla spies a buoy. It's the right one to snag. Captain Tom grabs his gaff and the winch begins to drag. Tom is first to see the catch. There's a lobster inside to check. He pulls one from the trap that's dripping on the deck. He measures the lobster's carapace or carapace from its eye to the start of its tail. Is it the right size to keep? Is it female or male? You'll notice that this is a wooden trap here, and that is what lobstermen used to use mostly, the wooden traps. And if you turn back, here's a metal one. They're easier to maintain. So, is it a female or a male? Do you think it's a female? Do you think it's a male? It's a female with some eggs. Back in the sea she'll go. But first, he'll notch her tail to let the next fisherman know. There's other sea life in the trap. Sea stars, crabs, and kelp. Someone has to send them back. Luke and Layla help. So look at that. Look at all those eggs. And only about 1% will live. And there's the notch. There's the V-notch. So when a lobsterman or lobster woman catches a female lobster with eggs, they need to make sure that they put a notch. The second tail flipper in from the right. So then she will always get thrown back. She's a mama lobster. The empty trap now needs new bait. The old goes off the side. Hungry seagulls fly above and somehow don't collide. The children help to push the trap back into the sea. Hands flat against the trap, Tom says, until I count to three. Can you show me your flat hands? <laughs> Excellent. One, two, three, let's push. Nice job. We have more traps to prep, says Tom, and they'll set for three days at least. Let's fill those bags again and hope for a lobster feast. Now Tom steers the lucky catch over by Seal Rock, where seals rest with cormorants amongst a seagull flock. Cormorants are the blackbirds you see here, and they are one of the deepest diving birds in the world. You'll often see them along Maine's rocky coasted ledges. They're drying out their feathers. They're missing a specific oil gland that most birds have to keep the feathers dry when they swim. So they are actually drying their feathers out. Two more traps, another lobster. Watch those claws and legs. This one is a keeper. It's a female without eggs. The pincer and crusher claws will certainly need bands. The kids can use the banding tool even with small hands. There's that banding tool that I showed you earlier. So here's the illustration of it. And here's the real deal. All of these illustrations were done by Connie Rand. She is a wildlife artist from Maine. And these are all done in acrylic. Here's Luke with the keeper. It's a good sized one. He poses for a photo and says this was really fun. Tom drives the boat back in. A crew member gathers the gear. The kids run up the ramp and say, let's come back next year. And very, so many families do come back year after year. And not, you know, there's not just tourists that go on this boat. There's a lot of mainers, a lot of locals. Here you'll find the lobstering lingo section in the back. This is a glossary. This explains all of the terms that you might have seen and we're not too sure about.
and there's a bio, a biography, a little snippet about a little information about me and my illustrator, Connie. She lives down the road. She's also a Mainer, and there's Captain Tom. We'll use this guy. This guy's definitely a keeper, right? Let's double check. So, we would take this side of the measuring gauge and we would stick the point here right in the back of the eye socket. And the lobster just moves his eye ball right out of the way. And we have to make sure that this point hits the back. Does it hit the back? Yes, it does. This is where the tail starts, right here. So this is the carapace. And there are two sides to the measuring gauge. So one side measures three and a quarter inches. So the carapace needs to be, it need, um, excuse me, the carapace needs to be three and a quarter inches at least. And there's another side to the measuring gauge. It's the oversize. This detects the uh, oversize of it. It tells us. So if the carapace it exceeds is over five inches, no, nope, it's not. So in Maine, we have the oversized limit, but they don't have that in every state. So if the back, if the carapace exceeds five inches, the lobster also has to go back. And we can get into all of that when I come to your school. I bet you have a lot of questions. And I'd love to answer your questions. If you want, you can have your teacher or your guardians, your parents or guardians, email me if you have questions at info at mixiebooks.com. So that's info at mcseabooks.com. You can follow us on Facebook at Mixie Books and Instagram at Mixie Books. I'm so glad we get to spend this time together and I can't wait to see what questions you have or if you have my book at your home. I do giveaways, so maybe you got a free one. Maybe you bought one at a school visit. Maybe you got it at your local bookstore. We're in 80 locations in New England. Um, we have two more titles coming out. Find a Moose With Me, A Countdown Adventure by Suzanne Busby, illustrated by Ashley Halsey. Um, and Ashley was the illustrator two years in a row for the Belmont race, um, the cover of that, which is very exciting. Suzanne is also the author of My Main. We are publishing her next title. And I'm so excited about my next book, How to Tap a Maple. My father-in-law has taught my family all about tapping maple trees here in Maine. So we are very excited about these next titles. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.